So hi, Sir Tish and my fellow friends. So today, me and my team gonna present about the group assignment one of DPM two four four three, which is the cargo operation management. So uh, there are a few um things we're gonna go through in our assignment presentation, which is first cluster cargo classification, second care and maintenance of steel wire ropes, then the nine classes of dangerous goods classification. Coming with the compulsory question one, duties of junior cargo officer before, during, and after the dry cargo operation. And then lastly, compulsory question two, which is the cargo storage plant, which include the pre-storage plan, special rotation, waste distribution, cargo compatibility, and also the safety as per IMDG codes. Today, I'm going to present about the first cluster, which is the cargo classification. So this is general knowledge about the maritime world. So according to UNCTAD, in Maritime Transport Review 2021, Ocean transportation is the most widely used mode of transportation, which accounting for around 80% of world trends. So there are a few types of cargo classification, which is bread bulk cargo, new bulk cargo, and then dry bulk cargo, followed by liquid bulk cargo and also containerized, containerized cargo. So for the first one is the bread bulk cargo. Bread bulk cargo is the good that are stored on board ship in individually counted units. So it's mean like the bread bulk cargo is not stored in the container. It's being stored in the hull of the vessel. So it's mean the bread bulk cargo is being packaging by fuel packaging method, which is the bag or sack. So usually, for example, the goods that can be packed in bag or sack are sugar, flour, salt, and also coffee. Secondly, is wooden case. Wooden cases is also one of type of packaging the cargoes. The example of the cargo then can be packed in wooden cases or the crate is furniture or machinery parts and also the artwork. Next, the pallets. For example, um, this brick or the cement can be packed in the pallet. Then the cargo nets also one of the type of packaging. For example, <clears throat> The goods that can be packed using the cargo nets are luggage, sports equipment like bicycle and also kayaks. No, <clears throat> following is the drum. Um, the goods such as the petroleum product, industrial chemical substances, and also food grade liquid can be stored using the drums. Lastly is bailing. Bailing is a process of packaging material into dense, tightly bound units called bales. For example, the item that can be bulked are cardboard paper, plastic, and also tire belts. So next we're going to present about the advantage and the advantages of the bread bulk cargo. Firstly, the, the advantage of the bread bulk cargo is the packaging is more flexible. Huh. It means the company can transport anything they want at once without having to divide the good into the well-balanced container, which saves more time and more, uh, more saving costs by uh, docking at the port. Secondly, it is more faster than other shipping cargo methods. This is because logistic business can begin the moving process immediately after loading cargo directly on board the vessel. Because the goods are already pre-packaged, the company that operate on low margin of profit save a few days on either side of the road for unloading or loading might have a significant impact. It means the less time you spend at the port, the less money you can you need to pay to the port. On the other hand, the disadvantage of the bread bulk cargo is is more costly actually. This is because large goods is frequently connected to oversized parcels. The fact that unitized goods is neatly packed into container also contribute to this situation because it allows shipping company to arrange the ship to carry as much as as possible. However, the break mass frequently consume a sizable portion of the ship without the capacity of enhance the vertically by the putting numerous lots on top of another. Secondly, the security is less safe. This is because the break bar transport is totally open air. It is possible for goods to disappear during the transportation, to be stolen or damaged due to colliding during the shipment. It's not possible that security in this transportation method could be less safe because the condition in which the cargo is kept are not standard. So we're going to the next, which is neural bulk cargo. Neural bulk cargo is a subcategory of general cargo, which transported in bulk form and in the huge quantities. The cargo are accountable and prepackaged. 
Example of neural bulk cargo, there are heavy machineries, locks or lumbers, steel columns, waste paper, waste paper binder, I'm sorry, and also automobile. So here we're going to explain about the benefit and the disadvantage of the neural bulk cargo. Firstly, the advantages of neural bulk cargo is can be transported in variety of cargo. It is because the neural bulk cargo is already pre-packaged and can be accountable. It can fix into a variety of cargo carrier like container ship, red bar cargo, and also new bar carrier. Besides, cargo can be loaded and unloaded in a short of time because it due to the same factor, which is it's already pre-packaged. So the less time you need to load and unload the cargo. Then it's about a disadvantage. So actually, new bar cargo is more difficult to handle than bar cargo because it can be irregularly in size and also shapes. This can make it's more difficult to load and unload and can increase the risk of damage to the cargo. Not only that, it also increases the possibility of the worker to involve with the hazards, which may result in accident or injury. Moreover, new bar cargo are more expensive than to be transported. This is because it requires specialized handling and equipment. For example, the new bar cargo requires specialized cargo handling equipment such as grab and cast time shell buckets, forklift, and also the Roll trailers. Furthermore, I'm going to explain about the dry bar cargo. Dry bar cargo actually is the last air transportation of unpackaged goods. It uses specialized equipment to load and unload. The good is directly loaded into the hull of the vessel. So here are the example of the dry bar cargo. Firstly, is the grains. Grains such as wheat, rice, corn, and also barley. And also secondly, coal. Um, call such as lignite and bituminous coal. Beside the example of dry bulk cargo are minerals such as iron ore, bauxite, and copper concent concentrate. I'm sorry. Lastly, the fertilizer also one of the example of the dry bulk cargo such as urea and ammonia nitrates. The advantages of the dry bulk cargo is more cost effective than individually packaging or containers. This is because it allows for the transportation of large quantity of goods in a single shipment, reducing the handling and packaging costs. Secondly, it is saved more time because um, the port just can directly load and unload the goods into the hall without using the specific, like specific um, handling equipment. And it is more speedy and efficient than other cargo shipment. This is because specialized equipment such as a conveyor system or Pneumatic unloaders and quick discharge and minimize the turnaround time. So, on the other hand, the disadvantage of the dry bulk cargo is handling and transporting dry bulk cargo requires specialized infrastructure, including parts with bar terminal, conveyor system, storage facilities, and loading or unloading equipment. This infrastructure requirement may limit accessible and increase capacity of investment. Not only that, it's also limited. Limited ability to be transported by a variety of vessels because the goods are in the unpackaged condition, which may limit its ability to transport using the certain mode of transportation and require specialized equipment for handling. Next, I'm going to explain about the liquid bar cargo. Liquid bar cargo is liquid or substances that are transported in huge quantities without individually packaged. <clears throat> Usually, liquid bar cargo are transported using the specialized carrier, like the tanker. VVCL and ULC, um, VLCC and ULCC, I'm sorry. So here are an example of the liquid bulk cargo. Firstly, is crude oil, gasoline, chemical substances, diesel, LNG, and also edible oil. The advantages of the liquid bulk cargo is, firstly, can be efficiently loaded and unloaded using the specialized equipment, such as pipeline, pumps, or loading amp. The facilities faster turnaround time and minimize the loading and unloading related delays. Secondly, liquid bar cargo can be stored in large tank or dedicated storage facilities, optimizing the storage capacity and reducing the space requirements. Tank can be designed to accommodate various types of liquid and the specific storage requirement. But for this advantage of liquid bar cargo are Spillage of leakage of the dry bulk cargo during handling, transportation, or the storage process. This, this kind of incident may cause in the environmental risk. 
proper safety protocol, maintenance and contingency plans are necessary to mitigate or avoiding these risks and ensure the environmental protection. Besides, liquid bulk cargo cannot be individually packed or containerized. Handling and transportation liquid in bulk form may require specialized tank, horse and fittings, which can limit packaging option and increase the handling complexity. Last but not least, I'm going to explain about the containerized cargo. Containerized cargo are the goods or materials that are packed and transported in standardized shipping containers. Containers are designed to be easily loaded, unloaded and transported uh, in uh, three where, which is oceans, and also land. So for example, the example of containerized cargo are consumer goods such as electronics and also clothes. Secondly, industrial equipment such as machinery and also tools. Then food products such as canned product and also the frozen foods. La last but not least, the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical such as medicines and vaccines. So the benefit of containerized cargo are containers provide a level of security and protection for goods during the transportation. This can be seals and lock, minimizing the risk of tampering or damage. Container also shield cargo from external elements like weather and contamination. Secondly, containerization cargo allows for efficient loading, unloading, and transition processes, reducing the handling time and speeding up the overall transportation process. Containers can be easily transferred between trucks, trains, vessels, and also planes without the need of repacking. For the disadvantage of the containerized cargo are, it requires specialized equipment and infrastructure, including the container ship, cranes, container yards, and also storage facilities. Investment in these resources can be significant. It means it will be more costly. Not only that, um, the containerization cargo may not be suitable for oversized or irregularly shaped cargo that cannot fit within standard cargo, cargo container dimension. Special arrangement of or alternative methods of transport may be required for such cargo. So that's all from me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Leslie Karen Ampilis. I will present cost to care and maintenance of steel wire. This is the introduction care and maintenance steel of wire. Oil rope are used typically for lifting and hosting in crane and elevators and for transmissions of mechanical powers. Oil rope is also used to transmit force in mechanism, plus H, a buoyance cables or the control surface of an airplane connected to lever pedals in the cockpit. The second slide is the options of the rope that should be inspection. inspected. The First point is rope inspection to occur at least once a year. Second point is inspection results should be recorded and any detected notice have to be reported and addressed properly. Again, it is how to calculate wire rope stretch. This is the figure that is important for calculate wire rope. Next, how to classify wire rope. The first point is uh, classifications of six divide 19 minutes are Wire rope of this type always has six strings. Second point is 19 is not the exact number of wire rope, but in the classifications of a wire number range. This is how to perform a visual wire rope inspection. Visual inspections are common and fast way to access wire rope connections. There are four types of a performance of visual wire rope inspection. The first step is visual inspections for distortion. Second step is Flow rate, testing rates, and visuals. This is the third step is wire rope diameter calculation. Fourth step is abrasions, corrections, beating, and table lubrications check. This is the last slide wire ropes maintenance. There are four wire ropes maintenance. Well, the first one is storage. Wire rope storage play a significant role in the rope operation. The second is to prevent liberations, to prevent uh, international separations. The third is cleaning. Optimal cleaning of wire rope can extend their service, life and great piece of operations. The last one is to protect them from being damaged. Thank you. This also from me. I will present about uh, class three. Uh, is it a uh, nine class of dangerous electrical rectification? 
for introduction in crunch edge of globalization incident involving the transportation of good whether by water land or air a cure frequently with to intention of the task which make the situation more and more dangerous for instance a container ship owned by msc of flaminia caused fire and exploded because there was indicate surveillance and awareness of the cargo being transported. Therefore, understanding and learning about the nine class of dangerous item clarification is crucial for every worker and society. Uh, these are the following are the nine class of dangerous good clarification that work, worker and society society can be known or can be learned. First is class one is explosive. This class include uh, items and sustain they have to potential to go up or discharge this come under this category. For class 2 is cases. Cases are verified based on their physical stage and standard pressure and temperature. Cases are categorized compressed gas, liquid gas, dissolved gas, exciting gas, and consumable gas are all included in this category. For class 3, uh, it's a uh, flammable liquid. Flammable liquid, I guess, a few. It is the non condensation engine for car and aircraft. As a, re as a result, they are one of the most dangerous items transport by some fast transportation. For car 4, a flammable solid. Flammable solid, they can catch fire with a heat or contact with water. I uh, refer to as uh, flammable solid, several relative chemical and solid desensitis. Explosive fall with this category. For class 5 is oxidizing substance and organic uh, uh, oxide. An oxidizing H is substance that are also not flavored by itself as a potential to fuel E effort other substance by reduced oxygen. For classic is toxic and infectious substance. Toxic substance are just that when ingested, inhaled, or in touch with the skin, has the potential to kill severely, harm, or injury human. For class 7 is radioactive material. This dangerous good regulation defines radioactive material, material as many material containing uh, radioactive light, where both the activity, concentration, and total activity as a specific uh, Predefined value as dangerous pro produce. For class A is a uh, corrosive substance. The power to harm the environment, other material, and living tissue. They can severely burn people or cor correct corrupt metal. This defined there. Class 9, uh, the last class is class 9. Michelinous dangerous substance and article. Substance and item that cause a danger or hazard to shipment, but are not clarified under another class. Uh, considered dangerous good, they are clarified as a misleading. The last one is conclusion. In conclusion, the clarification of dangerous good consists of nine distinct class, which are used to categorize this material based on the specific hazard of the purpose for ensuring proper handling, transportation, and storage in order to maintain safety, and mitigate potential risk as a trip with their use. Therefore, me. Thank you. So, I'm Lauren. I'm going to talk about the compulsory question one, which is identify the duties of junior cargo officer before, during, and after the cargo operation for dry cargo vessel. So, who is junior cargo officer? Junior cargo officer is a person who serves as an entry level in the logistic and cargo management industry and also a person to support the management and coordination of cargo operation so i'm going to start with the before cargo operation before the cargo operation a junior cargo officer need to prepare a cargo plan after that assisting in the verification and preparation of cargo documentation assisting mean uh, the junior cargo officer need to work together with the senior cargo officer or the ship's officer. After that, execute the pre-loading inspection to ensure that cargo hold is clean, dry, and safe to be used. And also, they need to check for any damage that may affect the vessel or the cargo. 
after that work together with senior cargo officer and ship officer to determine the most efficient and safe storage arrangement and also assist in implementing safety measure and guideline for cargo operation. Next is during cargo operation. The junior cargo officer need to assist in supervising the loading or discharging of cargo. After that, verifying and documenting cargo operation, operation by maintaining the uh, record of cargo quantities loaded and discharged. After that, ensure compliance with safety protocol and regulation during cargo operation. Then monitor cargo operation, which is they need to ensure all the workers to use a proper uh, personal protection equipment. In other words, PPE. Then assist in troubleshooting any problem that arise during cargo operation, which means they need to work together with the senior cargo senior cargo officer to manage any incident or accident happen happen during a cargo operation. Next is cargo after cargo operation. The junior cargo officer need to organize all relevant cargo related documentation which is ensure that the documentation is accurate and complete for record keeping in the future reference. After that, assist in overseeing the cleaning and maintaining of cargo hold and related equipment. Then, the junior cargo officer need to participate, participate in post-cargo operation, evaluation and discussion with, with senior cargo officer. The post-cargo operation is where uh, they discussing discussing about feedback and suggestion about improving the cargo operation in the future to work efficiency. After that, update and maintain accurate cargo inventory record records. Then uh, to engaging in continuous learning and professional development development activities, which means uh, the junior cargo officer can participate in any cargo operation program in the future to gain more experience. So in the conclusion, uh, the, the junior cargo officer, besides being called as a fresh graduate officer, they also play a big role in the cargo operation. That's all for me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ruhi. Okay, so my part here is talk about the cargo storage plan, which include the pre story plan, the web website rotation, weight distribution, cargo mobility, and safety as per IMDG code. First thing first, the introduction of cargo storage. Cargo storage planning, ensuring safe, safe and timely transfer of goods on ship. Complexity with I IMDG code is a vital of handling hazardous item, but its guidelines also apply to non-dangerous cargo. These slides explore essential elements per storage plan, vessel rotation, vessel uh, weight uh, distribution, cargo mobility, and safety precaution. Firstly, is pre storage plan. A pre storage plan is crucial before uh, before loading cargo on a ship, considering various like size, weight, and handling needs. Its objective includes faculty loading ensuring even distribution and promoting efficiency, prior preparation, maximum cargo accessibility, stability and capability, increasing protection and reduce transport hazard. Second e, secondly is first vessel rotation. Vessel rotation is a crucial part of cargo storage, planning, ensuring automation, stability and weight distribution. <clears throat> Carefully, a careful placement of cargo units minimize stress on the ship structure, especially in the rough seas. The storage plan maintains a stable and maneuverable vessel by evenly distributing cargo, reducing the risk of accident and damage. The third is weight distribution. Proper weight distribution is uh, is central of vessel safety. The cargo storage plan ensures uniform distribution, maintaining stability and avoiding strains on compartments. Factors like Stability requirements, safety, uh, safety of gravity, and cargo weights are considering. The plans minimize issues like accessibility list or trim, preservative vessel stability, and maneuverability. Uh, fourthly, is cargo mobility. Cargo mobility is a crucial part, uh, or it's a crucial in so, uh, cargo storage design, firstly, of managing hazardous goods. 
The Stover plan ensure proper separation and are located based on characteristics like family, uh, flammability, toxicity, and risk of uh, risk of reaction of leaks. Following the IMDG code, regard regulation minimize hazard interaction, preventing pollution, accident, and harm to people and the environment. Lastly, is safety me uh, measures. How goes to planning? Prioritize safety through secure cargo handling and protection techniques like lashing, during pre uh, prevent damage in challenging condition. Safety measures including ventilation and temp uh, temperature control, uh, safeguard cargo crew and vessel. This precaution minimizes mishaps and ensure successful maritime mission. La conclusion: Storing plan. Planning ensures secure and efficient sea transportation is include pre storage planning, vessel rotation, vessel deposition, cargo complexity, and safety precaution. These measures faculty is fit, uh, is really loading improvement, stability, distribution of waste proper, properly, prevent, prevent hazardous interaction, and protect the crew and cargo. Uh, that's all from us. Thank you.